married people. What did you not find out about your significant other until after you got married? While we were dating, my husband always told me this story about how he used to race dirt bikes and wrecked one time so badly that he had to have surgery to reconstruct his nose. I had wondered why he looked so different in his younger pictures. Anyway, it wasn't until we had been married several years that his mother heard me mentioning that story and how scary that must have been for her, worrying about her son, and she didn't know what I was talking about. The truth was that he never wrecked a dirt bike, and his nose looked different because he had been ashamed of his larger than average Italian nose, so she saved up her money to buy him a nose job. That he knew how to ballroom dance and took a cake decorating course for an art credit. I learned it the same night. I couldn't decorate cupcakes, and he took over. Later at the event, he grabbed me and waltzed perfectly. Can't wait for the next few years. I'm probably late to this party, but I used to be married. That's no longer the case, so it goes. Anyways, I was getting dinosaur stuff for our boy, and his mother said something along the lines of, I don't like dinosaurs, and I'm happy they are not real. I chuckled, thinking she meant she is relieved her life is not like Jurassic Park, being chased by these giant predators. Nope. Turned out she believes dinosaurs never walked this earth. I had known her for 6 solid years, and this completely blew me away, sideswiping me with horror. She thinks people are guessing when they put partial bones together, and just fabricate these creatures. I'm still affected by this, even years later. When I go on dates, there is a litmus test now. I ask what her stance is on dinosaurs every first date. Not making that mistake again. That she was a bank robber. She told me she had saved up $700 from working summer jobs and babysitting while in high school. We get married, and get on our way to Branson, honeymoon capital of America, am I right? On the way, she confesses to me that she did not in fact save up $700 from part-time jobs. She admits she has saved up over $7,000 from her jobs. So, we go on an extravagant, for me, week-long spending spree of a honeymoon. We do everything. Helicopters, boat rentals, every show, see a souvenir, we buy it. Oh, a quilt? $500? Sure. We spent over $6,500 extra on this trip. We get home on a Sunday afternoon. We both have to return to work the next morning. There are several messages on the answering machine. This was in 2000, before either of us had cell phones. The third or fourth message plays. It is her boss from the bank she works at, telling her to contact him at once, that there is an issue they need to discuss, and leaves a number. Up to this point, I am in the dark, but by Monday morning it has all hit the fan. I learn that there was no mysterious savings account from high school. I learn that she had been transferring money from a couple large accounts on a regular basis into her own account. The total was somewhere north of $7,700. The bank was pissed, the clients were pissed, the authorities were already neck deep in this, and they were scary, to say the least. After several meetings, it was decided that if we made full restitution, the bank would not press felony charges. So, we now have one unemployed wife who is likely unemployable, one scared husband desperately trying to get his bank thieving wife a job anywhere, and one debt due immediately, for $7,700. We gather all the money left over, borrow $500 from her parents, $5,500 from mine, and my next paycheck. You wanna know stress? Ask your parents to help you pay back money your new wife stole from a bank. We get the bank paid back by the end of the week. After several weeks, things have died down some. She is working at McDonald's, I pulled strings with manager friends and we have begun paying back the parents. We actually don't hear anything for a while, and the immediacy of the crime has subsided. In fact, it wasn't until 2002 that we were contacted to appear in court. We were still young and ignorant, so we get lucky here. The feds were easy to work with. The bank didn't make a huge deal about it, since the money was returned. It is a small town bank, two branches total so somehow we avoided any real heavy issues. We took the advice of some guy who represented the bank, 
and really we just wanted this part of our lives to be over, so we would have done anything. She went into court, sans lawyer, and plead guilty to a class C misdemeanor. The judge gave her two years probation and a restriction of never working at an FDIC establishment. And this is how my life as a married man began. TLDR, wife robbed a bank. We spent it all on a honeymoon. I found out when we got back home. Edited to update. Well, thank you everyone for your words of support and encouragement. And, thank you kind stranger for the gold. I want to take a minute to answer some questions and address some concerns. First, yes, I know it wasn't robbery. And, yes, bank robber sounds more dramatic than embezzler. But when did enhanced drama and wordplay get outlawed on reddit? But really, I kid. It's all good. Second, yes, my mother-in-law is a great woman. But she is a mill, not a milf. No chance of sneaking downstairs for XE time ever happening. Third, the divorce was delayed because of her pregnancy. It was delayed initially while she underwent some surgery, on my insurance, I didn't want her stuck with thousands of dollars in bills. That would have just hurt her ability to provide the kids a quality life. Fourth, the kid wasn't mine. It came out the wrong color. Plus the father signed paperwork and did the test. He didn't fight paternity. Oh, and the kid was born under my insurance. I guess it was a good thing, because she was put on bed rest, and then confined to the hospital for the last 8 weeks of the pregnancy. She's been on bed rest for my two girls. Fifth, I did do some smart things. I convinced her it would be cheaper to divorce with just one lawyer. So she said to pick one, and she'd pay half. That meant he was my lawyer looking after my best interests. So I can get away with the girls with 50-50 custody, they use my address as their legal residence, attend school in my district, and I pay no child support or alimony. I kept the house, my belongings and my girls. Ultimately, I would like to think she and I would make better choices if we had it to do over. But I wouldn't trade or change a thing, because I have two wonderful daughters from her. She lives one town over, the girls stay there two or three nights a week. We get along decently, but I do limit my interactions as much as possible. Generally, it consists of dropping the kids off in the other's driveway, and then once a month she pays for half of the kids insurance. I have them covered, she reimburses me. Found out about a year after we were married when we went to buy a house. We were both in our 30s, and I had already bought and sold a house before. Took us well over a year to find the exact house we wanted, and applied for a mortgage. I thought it would be a slam dunk, and I was floored when the bank called and said our application for a mortgage was rejected. I asked for an appointment to find out why. We both went in to see the loan officer. The conversation went about like this. We take both spouses, incomes and credit history into account when applying for a mortgage. Your incomes together met the threshold for getting this mortgage. You're, pointing at me, credit history is almost flawless. There is a slight issue that happened 3 years ago with a late payment, but that is nothing to be concerned about. However you're, pointing at my wife, credit history is an issue. And he pulls out, sheet after sheet after sheet, of credit issues with my wife. Late payments after non-payments, after credit card after credit card. It seemed like it went on forever. She just stared forward the entire time. We had to apply for a mortgage using solely my income. TLER, found out a year into our marriage that my wife's credit history was a nightmare. I didn't learn this until after 17 years of marriage. My wife passed away. At the funeral I met her ex-husband, her 22 year old son who she hadn't seen for 19 years and her other 20 year old son who she gave up for adoption, from a different father. I never knew any of them existed until the night before the funeral when her best friend asked if I minded if they came. Yes, it was awkward. She never had spoken of them. The closest she came to admitting it was when we were dating, and she said, don't believe a word my sister says, she tells everyone that I'm divorced and had two kids. 17 years later I found out that was the truth. Edit, obligatory, crap this blew up. She had died suddenly, so I was in shock at the funeral, and A, didn't want to be a donk and not let them pay their respects, and B, 
I wasn't really in a clear mind that day and just said, sure, and hi, sorry to meet like this. We dated for 2 years before getting married, and I only met her mom and sister. Her parents had been divorced after her dad beat her, so I never met him. Her sister was on probation for embezzlement and was a huge liar. That's for another time. Her mom passed away after we got married, and her sister ended up going to prison, so no, we never interacted with any other of her family. We were married 10 years, before we had a daughter, and at no time with the doctor, in my presence, did she indicate that she had been through any of this before. Needless to say, I have trust issues now, although I haven't been in any other relationships yet. My daughter was young when my wife passed, so I didn't tell her any of this now, but I will when she gets older and is capable of understanding. And yes, I'm doing fine. I was angry with my wife on many levels when she passed, but she left me with a beautiful daughter that made up for everything else. And I'm doing okay now. That he didn't spend all of Desert Storm in Berlin like he said he did. I found that out about 10 years after we got married. He was in the front row in a documentary on Desert Storm that was filmed, in part, in Saudi Arabia. Then, about 10 years after that, I found out that he didn't just drive a truck in Saudi Arabia, and did indeed see combat. He won't talk about it, and I accept that. He knows that I'm here for him if he needs to talk about it one day. Soldier guy here. Sometimes the problem isn't that they saw crazy shit. I mean that's what everyone assumes when soldiers don't want to talk about the wars they were in. Sometimes the problem is that they feel like they never did anything. So many guys I work with tell their spouses nothing, because it's better to let them guess than admit, I never did anything. Sometimes treating soldiers like heroes is worse than treating them like normal people. You see on TV all the crazy shit that goes on. Recognize that you weren't a part of it, and feel embarrassed or ashamed. I have no idea what experiences your husband has had. Just recognize he's got reasons for telling you what he told you. And he's got reasons for not telling you the things he doesn't want to talk about. The extent of his alcoholism. Holy crap. How did he hide it? Drank like a social drinker, you know, maybe a glass of wine with dinner, mostly on a Friday night or Saturday. Graduated to going out after work with the gang from the office, and walking in sloshed. I have no idea how he drove like that. Coming home with a note from a boss that his performance was sorely lacking, and that he had to shape up. He countered this with just getting another job in his industry that paid more. I used to drink every day. From the moment I got off work until I went to bed. So, my wife made an appointment with a marriage counselor, and told me we should go. I hated the idea, but knew it was a good idea. The first few appointments were about us and how we treated each other during certain situations. Communication, why we love each other, what we want to improve about ourselves, and what we want or so to improve on. Alcoholism was included in these conversations. It was extremely uncomfortable talking about it, and I hated it. Then, the therapist starts asking about my alcoholism. I explained the extent of it. Three shots, 50 milliliters, from the gas station close to my work, then two more and some beer from the local liquor store. It was the same every night. It was the exact amount I needed. I knew if I bought more, I would drink it. Then, he asked me, why? Why do you drink this much every day? I didn't know what to say. I didn't have an answer for him. For myself. I didn't know. We continued to see him a couple more times. I'm still drinking the same amount every day. Then one day at work it was driving me insane. Why? Why do I drink every ducking day? That was it. I stopped my routine. I may have a drink or two here and there, but I no longer feel the need to drink every day. My life has never been better. The relationship between my wife and I has improved greatly. I've been spending so much more time with my children. I am happy. Sometimes all it takes is a little push on the right direction. Side note, I still see the counselor on my own, it helps a lot. I still think about drinking every day, I just choose not to. He specializes in substance abuse and counseling for couples. By the way, thank you wife. You saved me. I love you.